Mr. Prime Minister, welcome to Brussels and welcome uh, to your active. It's a pleasure. Uh, by the way, congratulations uh, for uh, winning uh, the elections. Uh, your party, uh, which you created recently, uh, won, and you succeeded to you succeeded to form a coalition government. So far, so good. So far, so good. Yeah, sixty-five days later, we're working very hard, and uh, people are waiting for results now. There's, they've been waiting for so many years to to see the change happen. Now we've been elected with this mandate, and they want to see results. That's and you you won on an anti-corruption ticket. That's important. That's uh, one of our main uh, promises: zero tolerance to corruption. And that means there, is, there are no exceptions. Nobody's going to feel above the, the rule of law. And um, there, will be, will, there will be no division between opposition or governing uh, party uh, or governing coalition. Uh, we would not close our eyes to even the smallest incidents of corruption. Uh, you were here uh, recently uh, on the 27th of uh, January. You visited the European uh, uh, Parliament and you told uh, MEPs that uh, 20 people in Bulgaria dominate uh, corruption. I later then submitted 19 of them to the chief prosecutor and I said that the 20th is the chief prosecutor himself. So, uh, you, you mean that... Uh, one of the people who dominate corruption in Bulgaria, one of the 20 people, is the chief prosecutor. We've declared as a party, even out from the parliament, that uh, we believe that with the current leadership in the prosecution office, with this current prosecutor general, um, change will not happen, in our opinion. And we believe that the best thing for the country, the best thing for the prosecution, and even the best thing for himself, is to resign. This is something that he has to do by himself. Um, we have uh, the constitution separates the executive uh, power from the judicial power, which he is part of. So we cannot make him do it in any way. Uh, but we really strongly suggest that that's, we need change in the prosecution. Uh, we need people uh, that are fully independent, that are fully transparent, that are, they have no commitments to anybody else and put the rule of law above everything. That's what Bulgaria needs today. Uh, do you think that you will be able to achieve these goals uh, during your mandate? And how do you imagine uh, uh, Bulgaria after a full mandate of four years? So my dream is to say in four years, uh, Bulgaria to be given as an example of how fast corruption can be eradicated when there is a strong drive to leadership how leadership can actually make the difference in such a fast pace. I really do not believe in the whole idea of uh, corruption, corruption is part of culture or it's, there is tradition in this. No, I think it's about uh, the right laws, the right incentives, and really putting content into these laws. Because we have the laws today. Uh, the problem is there, there is no content in eradication. But uh, I'm truly committed, and our government is truly committed to go after it. So I hope we can, we can speak with you in four years and, and talk about what we've achieved. It will be my uh, greatest pleasure, indeed, to speak after four years and uh, uh, to say, uh, yes, Bulgaria has solved uh, its uh, problems. But uh, this is your first uh, uh, European Council meeting. And uh, uh, since uh, you were elected, I think uh, you have received many phone calls. Uh, asking you to find a solution to the Bulgarian veto, uh, which doesn't allow uh, North Macedonia to start uh, accession negotiations. So, uh, what is new there, uh, can you tell us? We're working on the process now. Uh, we are uh, going through the current position uh, of the existing uh, 4 plus 1 criteria that have to be done. And I think we have found a path and we have, a, we have found a path based on um, the idea of let's talk about all the synergies and all the uh, pluses we can gain from good neighborly relations. We established communications with the transport ministries, the infrastructure ministries, the cultural ministries. We've already signed 
a um, few agreements. We already have a plane from Sofia to uh, Skopje. The first flight. The first flight is done. You uh, know, the Europeans are not aware that there is not a railway between uh, Sofia yeah, and no Skopje. Railway, no airport, no, no airplane connection. You have to fly to Vienna. To, and come back in order to get to Do you Skopje. think that people in Brussels uh, understand the background? I mean, d during Tito Yugoslavia, uh, there was an anti-Bulgarian uh, policy uh, in, uh, in Yugoslavia and in the Republic of uh, North Macedon of Macedonia at that time, which has unfortunately persisted. Uh, do they understand this, your counterparts? I'm trying to focus them at the current situation. Uh, and the current situation is that we've agreed with um, the government of North Macedonia that we have to tackle exactly what you based on these years of negative propaganda that has happened uh, during the communist years uh, to make sure that we create a mechanism with which we can eradicate discrimination, hate speech during the accession process. This comes together with a legal framework, uh, which means uh, because the, the Macedonian constitution, North Macedonian constitution, is, uh, has very specific elements that it talks about group rights, not individual rights. They so name, They name uh, the different ethnicities in their country, uh, namely they name uh, Bosniaks, they name Albanians, but they don't name Bulgarians. Yeah. And I think now we have an understanding with, with uh, the new government that this should be included in the constitution in a way that um, any uh, Bulgarians in North Macedonia can feel with equal rights as their counterparts in, of other Macedonians of other origin. So this equality and anti-discrimination has, has been agreed that it has to be tackled. Now we have to find the right mechanism how to do it to make sure that it does happen. And in this respect, we're talking with our friends from Brussels to, to serve almost as a, as a guarantee for this as part of the negotiation agreement. That would be news if the Commission agrees, because uh, for the time being, uh, they, they try to stay away from this problem. Now the, the question is very different. The question is, when it's not one country pushes and the other country says no. Now we are planning to go to the European Commission with a joint proposal. That's first of all very different. Second, we're putting it on the principles of the Copenhagen criteria, on the principles of uh, legal protection of um, people of our origin. In other words, we're not putting bilateral issues specifically. We're putting the principle of uh, that that's the principles that are actually within the European member states altogether. And specifically, uh, I think if Brussels sees this current problem between our two countries as an opportunity to enhance the accession process, it could use the same roadmap after that with the other member states in, in the Balkans that will be uh, invited. In other words, this is not a unique issue to us. In all of the Balkans, we all have this uh, historical uh, interchanges, different uh, groups of other origins within our uh, neighborhood. And I believe a constructive mechanism anti-discrimination and a constructive mechanism of legal protection within the, the rounds of the Constitution would make it so much easier after that for the next accession country. So it's a, we're, we're paving a, road, a roadmap and I think uh, our European friends are starting to recognize that this could be actually an advantage. Solving this problem would be a bigger advantage than just the bilateral issue of Bulgaria and North Macedonia. You're talking about the debalkanization of the Balkans. <laughs> I'm talking about putting new meaning in the word balkanization. Okay, I, I cannot uh, uh, fail to ask you uh, about the greatest uh, geopolitical uh, conflict uh, these days, uh, the tensions at uh, the border of uh, Ukraine. Uh, can you define uh, uh, Bulgaria's policy, which uh, uh, apparently uh, focuses on uh, uh, diplomacy and uh, deconflicting rather than uh, bringing uh, massive NATO troops? So, first of all, uh, I want to uh, start putting the right definitions. Uh, Bulgarian troops are also NATO troops. I do not like to separate uh, the two. Uh, 
Second, we actually made a very clear council uh, of ministers decision, which says we have a Bulgar Bulgaria as a framework nation. In other words, we form our own battalion, but we're very understanding of all the deficits that this battalion has. And these deficits were inviting our uh, partners from NATO to fulfill. In other words, this is, this is, I think, a very constructive strategy, saying, okay, we're not going to be just consumers of security, we're going to be an active member of providing security within the NATO family. At the same time, we open our door to do a joint uh, enhancement of the deficits that we actually don't, cannot fulfill today. Um, and the second thing that I made clear yesterday uh, during the meetings with all the, the leaders of the European Union is that whatever differences there may be within the individual member states, once we have to discuss among ourselves, but then we have to come with one voice. We, have, we do not have the luxury in this, in this situation to be speaking individually in the individual voices. We have to speak in one voice and what, as much time as it takes, we have to coordinate among each other. But we have to look 100% and we have to be 100% united in our position. So what I confirmed yesterday to, to them is that Bulgaria will be a constructive and um, very stable partner within the European Union and within NATO. So they should, be no, they should not be afraid of any surprises coming from us. Now we're a predictable partner. I have always wondered when a new prime minister arrives for his first European Council, what happens? Do they greet you? What happens? Yes, everybody's curious to meet you, uh, as, uh, as though you're joining a new club where they don't know you yet. And it was, um, I was invited yesterday with a very positive reception. There are a lot of hopes from our European partners that Bulgaria has finally put in its history the, the grey economy, the corruption, the unpredictability in foreign policy. Now they see in us, that the new government, uh, a new face of Bulgaria, which they hope to, to see as a uh, very predictable, uh, very constructive, a uh, very transparent member of the European Union. And that's exactly what I'm confirming that our government will do. A new face of Bulgaria. Thank you very much, Mr. Prime Minister. Thank you so much. You are always welcome. Thank you. Thank you for the interview.